All right, we got these two shows here to talk about, and if you've not heard, the AW Dynamite Championship match with Hangman Page versus uh, Brian Danielson opened the show because, in fact, they went to a one-hour draw in the championship match. And when was the last time there was a one-hour? Smokes one- was this a great match? Oh yeah, it was super. When was the last one-hour draw on American TV? I mean, like, I mean, I know Omega and Okada matches were on American TV on Access, but um, as far as like. Um, I'm trying to remember when. I mean, I, I guess Josh Alexander and TJP did an hour. Um, so I guess that would be the last one. It would be the Iron Man match with Josh Alexander and TJP. But not that many people watch that match. Um, I'm trying to think going back because this is the first time AEW's ever done an hour match. And then before that, I mean, WWE did, did gauntlet matches that went over an hour, but there were a series of matches. Um, I mean, I, I definitely remember a Kurt Angle Brock Lesnar hour match on SmackDown, but that's like God, like seventeen years ago or something. There's, a, there's, I'm trying to remember if there's any. I can't off the top of my head remember anything since then as far as a TV match going an hour. It's risky. They've never tried it before. The match was sensational. I mean, just freaking Brian Danielson is is great and and. And Paige was great in this match, too. Um, Danielson, you know the thing with this match? It's, it's like the um, the Miyahara match with Jake Lee that was an hour match in, in All Japan recently. It's like, it did not feel like an hour. Like, this thing went an hour, and I swear to you, it's like when, when Danielson wrestled Omega for 30 minutes, and it felt to me like it was like 17 or 18, and this one felt like it was maybe 35. I mean, they just, Danielson's got a way of pacing matches where they just don't drag, you know. I mean, even though it started very, very slow, I mean, five, six minutes in, I knew they were going. I don't want to say I knew they were going an hour, but I, I mean, I, I mean, I knew it's like, like not some great intuition because people were texting me going like, "Oh my God, they're going forty-five minutes, aren't they?" You know, and this is like in, in the first five minutes, you could tell it's they were pacing for a long match, but even so, it was like I never felt it dragging. Um. I mean, if there's a negative, I'm going to say it's like I really, in a match like this, did not enjoy the commercial breaks a lot more than in most matches where you just sort of accept it because this was a classic match. And I was just kind of like, I didn't want the breaks when they came. You know, it was just like, I'm enjoying this classic match. But it's the necessary evil when you put a match on television. But uh, 60 minute draw. And the other thing about it that was very notable is when it was over, the announcers were. They were not subtle. It's like, oh, my God, I can't wait for a rematch. Oh, my God. So, I mean, I, I think that that's, uh, you know, whether it's January 5th or January 8th, I think we're getting this one run back. Maybe the pay-per-view. Well, I mean, the thing with the match is, in order to do it again, you kind of have to have the no time limit stipulation. So you could do it at the beginning. You couldn't do it on a show that goes an hour. But you could do it on a dynamite that goes two hours, yes. and uh, start right at the beginning of the show and say we're just going to go until it ends. Or, or, or you could, or you could do a thing um, where you say whether you do it or not, you can do it on the Battle of the Belts and say that TNT is giving us as long, you know you do it with a sports event, you know you, we've got as long as that we need, and then let's say you do a forty-five minute match, you know, and then that's fine. You yep. got it you in. Can do that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and if that's where you want it, because, you know, again, that, that first battle of the belts, it's very important to establish it with a classic match. And God knows this match, like, like they could wrestle 50 times, and I'm sure that every match of those 50 will be a classic match because um, Brian Danielson is that good, and, 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 and so is Paige. You know, as far as that goes. What I thought was very interesting about this match is they did start slow, but what they did was they essentially did two matches because the first 20 minutes of the match was the build towards what would normally be the last 10 minutes of a match where they're doing near fall, near fall, big move, big move, big move, and the crowd's going nuts thinking like this match is going to go like 35 minutes, but man, what a classic. So they built to this big peak 
And then they did the spot where, uh, I forget what the injury was. but uh, Brian Danielson kicked the post. Yeah, Danielson kicks the post. There was actually something before that. I think Hangman went up top for a second uh, moonsault, but he got pushed well, off. Well, and, oh, he got, he, he got pushed off and yep, landed on So he on takes the shoulder. bump onto the, uh, the ring apron. He sells his shoulder. Brian worked on the shoulder for a while. Then Brian kicked the post, and Hangman works over his leg. So essentially they, they did like a full 30-minute match, but instead of doing a finish when they reached the peak... They actually began part two of this match, the second match. And what was also interesting, and obviously however many people were in the audience, I can't read everybody's mind, but from listening to the crowd reactions, especially near the end when uh, Justin Roberts announces, first I think he said there were like 10 minutes left or whatever it was, but when, he, when, he, when the fans figured out, man, there's only like five or 10 minutes left, there were audible boos. And they did the same thing again when there was one minute left. There were audible boos. But what was interesting is that even though they didn't want to hear the time calls and they reacted in a way where you would think they knew it was going to a draw, in fact, when they did all of the big final near falls in the last two minutes of the match, the fans were into all of them because they still believed that this might end at 59 minutes and 50 seconds. Look, you could do it. I mean, like, matches have ended. I mean, like, Grand AEW's never done this. But New Japan has done, you know, 29-59, 29 Sure. You know what I mean? New, but the point I mean, is, they believe that that could happen in this match. Well, this was not happened. a could. crowd it that, that 55 minutes in were thinking, oh, okay, for sure we're going to get a draw in this match. Which is very yeah. impressive, because when you go 55 minutes with a 60-minute time limit... I would think that most fans would presume you're surely going to go to a 60-minute draw. Well, yeah, but you don't have to. I mean, because if you remember with Flair and Steamboat, they went um, on that famous match. They went 56 and a half minutes, and they did a third well, of course you don't have to. But yeah. I'm saying that I would think the American audience, seeing the match go 55 minutes yeah, no, with a 60-minute time limit, is probably going to expect I, I, a draw. I, I think after But they still minutes, were popping very, very big. For these near falls, they were going crazy for the last. Uh, the story of the match actually is that Hangman had it won. He hit the buckshot lariat. He turned Brian Danielson inside out, and he's he didn't even start to crawl for the cover. He hit the move. Danielson took the bump, and they rang the bell. And he was, you know, I, I, uh, Danielson I, I, did roll where conceivably he could maybe have put his foot on the ropes. So there is some doubt left. But this was not the match where the champion was, like, stuck in the label lock and the time limit expired. And so you're thinking, yeah, you know, maybe Brian Danielson would have won. I mean, Hangman seemingly had this match won, but he actually could not finish off Brian Danielson. Yeah. Um, but I think that the lasting thing is that it was, was, that it was a draw, not that, um, you know, if, I mean, yeah, if, if, it, if it was the babyface going for the championship... You know, you would tell that story. The thing is, is, is also, is that they, they did not cheat on time in, in any, you know, because normally the rule of thumb of old sleazy wrestling is that, you know, you ring the bell, you, you get the guy, the baby face has the pin, one, two, ding, 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 right? You know, you do it. It doesn't matter if it's 10 seconds early or 10 seconds late. That's your story. And you ring the bell when they get there. And this one, I mean, they rang the bell at 60. They didn't wait for the two count or anything like that. And I think the people would have really, well, I mean, it wouldn't, you know, like people in a stopwatches or anything and go, oh, they went 10 seconds long to, to do that. I don't think anyone's going to really, that's not going to ever really be an issue even today. Actually, it would uh, be an issue because you have a stopwatch. <laughs> you would have mentioned it. Well, I would have, but the point is, is that, yeah, but you can still do it. I sure, mean, but they didn't need to. Well, they, they they didn't. You never need to. But the point is, is that that they don't lie to their audience about time as compared to every wrestling promotion, um, aside from St. Louis. And St. Louis even did. Um, you know, <laughs> there was there was once a, a Harley race match, and I don't remember who it was with. But um, they did a 60-minute draw, and I think that it was really like, you know, 51, 53 minutes. And somebody went to Larry Matisic, and he goes, I timed this. And it's like, you didn't go 60 minutes. And Larry went to Sam, and Sam goes, well, this is never going to happen again. You know, it was, it was um, you know, I mean, so, so from then on, every match, every match had to be actually 60 minutes. And um, I'm sure in AEW... 
you know, the every third year or fourth year when we do a 60-minute match, because I'm sure they're not going to do it regularly, because Tony Khan is not a fan of draws, and obviously the people, when the draw came, okay, you just saw this classic match, this great match, and then ding, 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 the bell rings, and people booed, you know. And, they and, booed, they chanted five more minutes, and the announcers were like, we're going to head to a break. And they yeah. came back with an interview. It was just, it was done. So that was well, that. they didn't. They didn't want to do five more minutes. That because well, they're trying to build a they're rematch. Of course, they're not do five more minutes. But hey, listen, you got to establish to the fans that you can have a sixty-minute draw in a championship match. They got a fucking great match for free on television for an hour. So I have, I had absolutely no problem with it. Oh, I have it builds no up a rematch. I, 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 I have no, I have no problem with doing the sixty-minute match. I'm, I mean, obviously, I mean, I like it much better this way than an Iron Man match. Because in this one, it's like it's like in an Iron Man match. You know, like one of the things with the Iron Man match is that you know that the finish is is going to come in an hour, so you can go and and do other shit for forty five minutes because you know you're not going to see the finish of the match. But in this match, I mean, you never knew when. You know, like like again, they were building to the finish at what like twenty five minutes in, thirty minutes in, but they just kept going. And then there were other points where they were looking like they were building the finish, you know, at other points in the match. But they just didn't do it. They just kept going. So I thought it was, you know, supremely well worked. Brian Danielson really what a great ring general he was in, in this. And Paige did a lot of big moves, bled. I mean, just a great, great match. The, um, the one thing is that, um, yeah, it's like the, the I, I mean, I wouldn't say anything bad, but I just, man, I got, I was mad about the commercials, especially when they were, especially when you passed 35 minutes. I think in the first 35 minutes, I I wasn't really mad about the commercials. You know what I mean? It's like they come, it's like we're watching a match, blah, blah, blah. But like that last commercial break when you're so deep into the match, it's like, oh, fuck. You know, it's like, you now you got to pay the bills there, brother. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's what you get for being putting it on TV, and it's fine, and that's just what it is. And uh, but, but um, yeah, you know, I mean, what a, you know, it, I thought the, you know, it didn't even, you know what, it didn't even matter what was on the rest of the show. You put that on a TV show, it's a fucking great TV show. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.